<laughs> Lots of emotions today. Lots of wonderful emotions today. Up and down and in the heart. Mm. Is this a good place for the mic? Yes. Does it work? Good. Hi. It's always such a treat. <laughs> I hope you don't get tired of my saying that. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what a great, wonderful sea of people, of souls, of hearts, of beings, of becomings. <laughs> it's marvelous. Mm. Well, several weeks ago, we started with the idea that life may be going along all swimmingly and well, and everything's going together just fine, and then some yeah, just subtle little thing might be just tweaked a little weird. <laughs> Or there might be a big thing. It doesn't really matter. Usually the big thing comes because we've ignored the little one. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. and, and we enter into a state that you now is just a, a bit uncomfortable. And we call it the disequilibrium point, right? That point where what had been going along smoothly is just needing a little change. Yeah. And we get to that place and and in that place, we're aware that we really don't have a sense of what needs to change or why or how, usually at that point. And so we need to look at our inner life. That's when we have to go inside, whether we're an individual or an organization or a nation or all of the humanity, really. We need to go inside and go, okay, what is out of alignment? What is not in alignment with what I know myself to be, or who I know myself to be becoming, or potentially could be. I'm reminded when I say that of a, a story that uh, Bradshaw used to tell about a doctor who had been a very effective and successful MD for some time, and he was somewhere in his 40s, and he was feeling that little, mm, something's not quite right. And he went inside, he took some time off, went fishing and camping. And, and he remembered that when he was in middle school, he loved to write stories. But by the time he was in high school, he was so focused on that MD, that medical degree, that it got lost. And so he started writing stories. And over a period of several years, he was no longer a practicing doctor. He was a very well-published author. <laughs> Right? He got in touch with that little bit of, hmm, something's not quite right here. And he didn't just jump up and say, okay, i got to go right. <laughs> no, he gently allowed that core piece of him that it got lost along the way to be woven back into his life and then become that core of his new life. And that piece that was lost along the way is what I like to call the seed. And so the next time we talked about the seed and the vision that emerges with it, if we, if we have a seed of who and what we can be, if we, we're aware of, oh, there's a piece of me that I love that isn't being really acknowledged and supported in this life, or there is a, a way I could be that I haven't been allowing. A lot of women go through this about 35 years old. And some of you remember. <laughs> yeah. You go, I gave away everything I am. <laughs> I gave it to being a student. I gave it to being an employee. I gave it to being a wife. I gave it to being a mother. Who am I? And so somewhere between 35 and 40, most women go through a crisis. And it sometimes looks like a health crisis. <laughs> and sometimes it's just, i got to get away for a little while and figure out who I really am. And then everyone goes, mm. <laughs> right? But we're finding that seed, that vision of possibility. And if we allow for that and we can you know, find that way to have the world in which we are living adjust for that possibility, then everyone finds a new level of equilibrium in this new way. And that new level of equilibrium in systems terms is called dynamic stability. <laughs> dynamic because it's never stable in the sense of fixed. It's never set. It's always 
you know, unfolding as the environment around us shifts, as we shift and change, as each step opens up the possibility of a new step, right? Dynamic stability. And that goes on for a little while until we realize, oh my goodness, we need to take a very clear action in the direction of that sense of who we could be, that sense of what's possible, that sense of what got left behind that now needs to be very much a part of our life or our organization. When I first started coming to speak here, we had about 30 chairs out. And if we were lucky, we filled most of them. Things have changed. <laughs> wonderfully. There's always been that love and that support and that openness and that discovery and all of that, but there are a lot of new faces that weren't here. We are becoming something far more than we were and possibly far more than we thought we could be. Now, Besides being a minister, I'm a futurist, right? So a lot of the work that I do is helping cultures and organizations and, and you know, communities discover what it is they want to be in the future and then help them find the way to it. And it's been great fun working through that with this organization because what we all knew was we don't want to be other than, we want to be more than. We want to continue to be this loving, open space for however many people in this community are ready for it. So becoming is taking the best of the being and moving it forward to incorporate the elements that allow that being to be more and more fully unfolding and expressed. Yes. We can't stop changing and growing. And that is the one thing that is the one constant in the universe. Change. The universe is increasing in complexity and possibility and potential, has been from the moment of its origin, whatever that was. And we are too, each and every one of us and all of us collectively. Increasing in evolutionary potential, increasing in love and capacity to understand and express and empathize and sympathize and recognize and all those wonderful eyes words. <laughs> we are that. We can't not be that. The minute we start to say, oh no, I can't be that. We're done. We can't stay on this planet. Because to be alive is to be continually becoming more. Continually becoming more. More fully, more deeply, more completely the core essence of our being, which is unique in every individual and in every organization. As a futurist, I've worked with hundreds of organizations through a lot of processes to get to where they want it to be. And of course, where they end up is never exactly where they started <laughs> or where they thought it was going to be. How many of us have started on a plan and ended up somewhere else? We talked a little bit about that last time. You know, How many ever thought you were going to live in Florence, Oregon? Right? <laughs> But you had qualities that you knew were what you were called to experience more of. And that's what put you here. That's what put you in this place. And those of you who live in Eugene, that's what put you there. <laughs> and Winnetoba. <laughs> Manitoba. Winnipeg. Manitoba. Yes? <laughs> Mix them together. <laughs> okay? Wherever we are called to be is that place where we have held those qualities of experience we're ready to step into. And we do it one small step at a time. 
because becoming is not leaping. Sometimes it looks like quantum leaps, but even in quantum physics, it's not what we've been taught, <laughs> okay? There is a long, very slow period of preparation, and then, oh, now we're functioning at this level. Right? And then, oh, now we're functioning at this level. The becoming process is a step-by-step -step process. It's just every now and then they're very big steps. And if we look back on our lives, we can see that. Now, sometimes those were very, very obvious. For example, we graduated from high school. It was a very big step. And those of us who went on and graduated from college, it was a very big step to the next piece. Or the marriage. You know, we a long, slow process leading to the wedding, and then, whoops, now I'm married. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> right. Whoops. How did that happen? <laughs> having babies, all of the above, right? Life is like that. Life is like that. And sometimes we're, we're going along and we're doing those long, slow processes and we're getting bored. <laughs> really? When is it going to happen? <laughs> when is that change? I thought that change was going to happen. What has happened in that situation is we're not paying attention. When we think we've been going on forever without becoming, it means we're not paying attention to what's happening in here. Because the moment we stop and look, we go, oh wow, six months ago, a year ago, even three months ago, totally different. Yeah. We are constantly becoming. We are constantly becoming as that great spiritual teacher, Muhammad Ali, said, <laughs> what we are thinking. We are constantly becoming what we are thinking. I was blown away when I found that quote. I like that one. Muhammad Ali. We're becoming what we are thinking. So the next step that is emerging is a function of what I'm thinking now. And in fact, there's some research that supports that what I'm thinking about before I'm going to sleep is what the subconscious mind is trying to create for me for tomorrow. And the next day, and the next week. Like two, three weeks down the road, you find yourself doing what you thought <laughs> way back there. That's what the mind does. <clears throat> We are becoming, our life is becoming what we are thinking. So that's why I encourage people never to watch the evening news. Or certainly not the 11 o'clock news. Not the 10 o'clock news at you. <laughs> right? Because we want the mind to be focused on that which we want to be experiencing more of, not less of. <laughs> right? Ah, becoming. Becoming the future that we want. That we want to see more of. That we're ready to see more of. Now, there's another little piece here. You know, there's the discipline of focusing our thoughts on that which we wish to experience more of, the qualities of it. It doesn't have to be the specifics. It doesn't have to be bright blue or pink or whatever. It doesn't have to be a particular brand. It doesn't have to be a particular size or whatever. But those qualities are what your heart is being drawn to. The qualities of openness, the qualities of trust, the qualities of love. What, those are the things that we're all drawn to. When I started as a futurist, I used to do a, a guided visualization with an organization. I'd sit down with the board of directors, and I'd have them do a visualization in which they saw the organization as some kind of an animal in the drawdown. And then I'd have them do another visualization, and that was, if the world were absolutely perfect, and this organization were absolutely perfect in a perfect world, what would it be like? Right? And in between those, sometimes I do, if my life were absolutely perfect, and the world were absolutely perfect, what would my life be like? And I've learned since that I may have had something to do with this, but at the time I was blown away that every one of them came up with the same thing. They all came up with a lovely little house 
with a nice yard and not a lot of traffic and not too far from the main part of town and on and on and on. I mean, it was so consistent every time anyone described their perfect life. Fascinated me. Wow. And what I got was that was the form they could imagine for those qualities that we all wish. The quality of security and comfort and beauty and peace and sharing. They all wanted to be in a neighborhood where people knew each other and hung out together, right? And all of that. We want those qualities. And so those of us who paid attention got to Florence, Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> We're always becoming that which we focus on. Always. So for the world, we've got some interesting things happening. And I do a long workshop on this. And in fact, I'm going to be doing it in Bend in like two weeks on the 24th, 23rd, 24th. Um, where we talk about what we've been told to focus on, what's really happening in the world, and how many millions of people all over the world, and I point to thousands of things, that are actually moving the world in the direction of love, light, peace, harmony, ecological balance, you know, social you know, satisfaction, economic stability without having to do a lot of corporate greed stuff and all of that. It's happening worldwide. People are focusing on those qualities that we all long to experience. So, we get to know with and for every one of those people that their work is not in vain, that their work is actually bringing forth the world that we're ready to experience, that this humanity, humankind, is becoming more fully what it was born to be, each and every one of us individually and collectively. And this wonderful congregation, especially after yesterday, it became so evident, is a part of that. And I'm proud to be a part of it. Thank you all.